The Great Gatsby is about the efforts of this one man, Jay Gatsby, to reinvent himself. The narrator of the story is Nick Carraway, who moves out to New York from the Midwest and ends up living next door to Gatsby. We see the whole story from Nick's point of view, as he meets people in New York's wealthy social scene and gradually gets to know Gatsby. Nick kind of falls in love with Gatsby and what he represents. Gatsby is an irrepressible dreamer. He has a really extravagant lifestyle and throws incredible parties, but this persona is completely his own invention. He actually grew up poor, and his real name isn't even Gatsby, it's James Gatz. Years earlier, he fell in love with a rich girl named Daisy and couldn't marry her because he didn't have any money. The book is set in the summer of 1922. At the beginning of the story, Nick Carraway moves to New York from the Midwest to begin his career selling bonds. He works in Manhattan, but he rents a little house way out on Long Island in the town of West Egg. His house is next door to a giant mansion. Nick goes to see Daisy and Tom, some rich friends he knows from the Midwest who now live in nearby East Egg, Long Island. Over dinner, he picks up on the fact that Daisy is unhappy in her marriage and that Tom has a girlfriend. He also meets Jordan Baker, a famous golfer, whom he starts dating a little later in the book. Later that evening, after he goes home, he sees his next-door neighbor, Mr. Gatsby, looking out over the water in the direction of Tom and Daisy's house. There's a green light on the dock by Daisy's house that you can just see. To get back and forth between West Egg and Manhattan, Nick has to pass through an ugly and depressing area filled with ash heaps. There's a gas station in this area, and a billboard with big eyes on it, advertising an optometrist. One Sunday, when Nick is on the train in this area, headed to Manhattan, Tom makes him get off and meet his girlfriend Myrtle. Myrtle is married to the man who owns the gas station, and she lives above a garage. Tom keeps an apartment in the city where he sees Myrtle. They all go there and have a party. Nick winds up going home with another man, a photographer named Mr. McKee. At the mansion next door to Nick's, parties go on all night long, every night. One day, Gatsby's chauffeur delivers an invitation to Nick from Gatsby, so Nick goes to one of the parties. Crowds of people come, drink heavily, and dance. He sees Jordan Baker there, and the two of them stick together. He meets Gatsby, and they talk about their shared experiences in Europe and World War I. Gatsby is nice to Nick, and they strike up a friendship. One day in July, Gatsby drives Nick into the city. On the way, he tells Nick about how he went to Oxford because it's a family tradition and how he inherited a lot of money and spent time hunting big game and collecting rubies and trying to get over something sad that happened to him. It sounds bogus, and Nick doesn't know whether to believe him. Gatsby tells Nick he's going to ask him for a favor that day, but that Jordan Baker is going to explain it. They have lunch with a man named Meyer Wolfsheim, a friend of Gatsby's whom Gatsby says fixed the 1919 World Series. Later that day, Jordan explains to Nick that Gatsby and Daisy fell in love years before, when Gatsby was stationed at Camp Taylor in Kentucky, and Gatsby was an officer. Daisy stayed in love with him, and almost ran off to New York to see him off. After the war was over, she got engaged to Tom Buchanan, but she almost didn't marry him because she got a letter from Gatsby. Now Gatsby wants to see Daisy, and he wants Nick to invite her to tea, because he wants Daisy to see his big house. Nick does what Gatsby wants and invites Daisy and Gatsby over to his house for tea. Gatsby and Daisy are awkward and embarrassed at first, but Nick leaves them alone for a half hour, and when he comes back, they've clearly decided they're still in love. All three of them go to Gatsby's mansion, where Gatsby gives Daisy a tour of all of his rooms and expensive possessions. Daisy begins to cry when Gatsby shows her and Nick all the very costly shirts he had sent over from England, saying she's sad because she's never seen such beautiful shirts before. From then on, she starts coming to see Gatsby and having an affair with him. Daisy and Tom go to one of Gatsby's parties, where they see the usual crowd plus a famous Hollywood actress and director. Daisy doesn't like it, so afterward, Gatsby fires all of his servants and stops having parties. Nick backtracks and tells us some of Gatsby's life story. Gatsby was the son of poor farmers in Minnesota. He wanted to become rich, but he also wanted to seem like someone who had always been rich so he invented a new identity, a new name for himself. He made friends with a rich man named Dan Cody and worked for him on his yacht. After Cody died, he became an officer, and he fell in love with Daisy at Camp Taylor. He was able to attract a rich girl because he had good manners and the uniform made it impossible to tell if he was rich. Daisy waited for him for several years, but after the war she married Tom. Gatsby devoted the next few years to becoming rich and getting her back. 
On the hottest day of the summer, Gatsby and Nick go to Tom and Daisy's house. Gatsby is hoping to publicly confront Tom and have Daisy say she's leaving him. The whole party, including Jordan Baker, all drive to Manhattan and get a suite at the Plaza Hotel. Gatsby does confront Tom, and Daisy does reluctantly say that she never loved Tom and that she wants to be with Gatsby. Tom says it's all nonsense, that Daisy's not leaving him, and that he knows Gatsby is a criminal because he's had him investigated. Gatsby made his money in organized crime and selling illegal liquor. Daisy breaks down and admits that it's not really true that she never loved Tom. Tom sees that he's won, so he sends Daisy and Gatsby to drive home together in Gatsby's car. On the way back, in another car, Nick and Tom and Jordan discover that there's been an accident and Myrtle has been hit and killed by Gatsby's car. Nick takes Tom home, and outside Tom and Daisy's house, he sees Gatsby lurking. Gatsby explains that Daisy was driving the car, and he's covering up for her. Nick goes up to the house and sees Tom and Daisy together in the kitchen, eating chicken. He can see that Daisy isn't going to leave Tom. Gatsby still can't believe he's lost her, though. Myrtle's husband, George Wilson, who owns the gas station, tracks down the owner of the yellow car. Ultimately, Tom tells him it belongs to Gatsby. George Wilson goes to Gatsby's house and kills him while he's floating in the pool. Nick tries to get people to come to Gatsby's funeral, but hardly anyone does. Meyer Wolfsheim won't come, but tells Nick how he started Gatsby in business. Tom and Daisy leave town before the funeral. One of the few people to show up is Gatsby's father, Henry C. Gatz. He says he's proud of what his son achieved, and he shows Nick a book with a written self-improvement schedule that Gatsby kept when he was younger, back when he was still just James Gatz. Nick breaks up with Jordan over the phone, and moves back to the Midwest. Gatsby dies in part because he's obsessed with the past. He can't let Daisy go, not because of their relationship now, but because of what they had, back when Gatsby was a poor kid in the army who got this beautiful rich girl to fall for him. Part of Gatsby's attraction to Daisy stems from what she represents for him, money in the upper class. He seems to think by winning Daisy, he can prove to himself that he belongs to the upper class. He embodies this very American idea that no matter where you come from, even if you're poor, you can become anything you want. But the book suggests this idea is somewhat of a lie, because Gatsby has to resort to crime to make his money, and he's murdered pursuing his dream. For more information about The Great Gatsby, check out The Great Gatsby Sparknote on sparknotes.com.